Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, listen, we are unfortunately, as you know, on the precipice of a potential assault weapon ban here in Washington State. And for those of you who've been kind enough to geek out on this channel now for the last few weeks, you are aware of how they are slowly chipping away at your rights and are likely going to be significantly disarming you this legislative session. Now that has a lot of you screaming comments and I do get an opportunity to read most of them and answer a few without the comments like this one here. Not really sure if we could do anything about that. But for the rest of you, when I do see a question that pops up with some frequency, it really says, hey, this is an opportunity for you to educate the viewers. So that's exactly what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to answer a question that a lot of you may have. So today, let's spend a few very important minutes and talk about a predicted timeline for Washington's assault weapon ban. Okay, before we get going down the road, we are going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Security Gun Club. That's right, Washington's nicest indoor facility is located right here in Woodenville, Washington. Now listen, you guys have already heard me brag about the facility and brag about the people and brag about Jackson and all the killer training they got there and all of that still remains true. However, right now what I want to talk to you about is this. Hey, have you ever thought about, I don't know, maybe stocking up on a particular platform of firearms. Hey, maybe you heard that your state legislature is kicking around the idea of banning you from the most common and popular sporting rifle known to man. Well, maybe this is the time to either stock up or if you thought about getting into this platform, now might be the time to do it. So stop by and see my good friends at Security Gun Club because right now they have a fantastic deal going on on all arrow precision. Uppers, lowers, parts, components, whatever you need, they have what you are looking for from arrow precision, which means not only are you buying from a local gun store, you're buying the parts made by a local manufacturer. So it's killing two birds with one stone. You're buying a killer product from a fantastic company. And listen, right now, if you go in there and you say, hey, Bill sent me, guess what? You're going to get an extra 5% off. So it's only good why supplies last and they are flying off the shelf because for some reason, everyone seems to be really interested in this platform firearms all of a sudden. So for more information, visit my good friends at Security Gun Club. That is security with an E, securitygunclub.com. Okay. So the question that we are getting asked a lot is, is, hey, what's the actual timeline? If this really happens, when is it likely to go to an effect? And basically, what does it mean to me? And I have said on several videos already, this one and this one and this one, that, you know, if you were thinking about stocking up on firearms within these particular platforms or component parts, now might be the right time to do it. What I'm going to do today, however, is I'm going to try to take a look into the crystal ball try to read the tea leaves, try to take a look at things from legislative history and common occurrences that we've seen in the past, and then try to predict for you when this is likely to become law. Because as we know, there is an emergency enactment date, which means the minute Governor Inslee signs it, it is effective law. So with that in mind, here we go. But remember, not only do we have to focus on what's happening in our state legislature, which of course is nothing but a bloodbath at the current time, we also have to focus on what's happening at the federal court level. Because as we know, there are two very significant cases that we are waiting rulings on. And so that has to be considered as we start to do our time calculations here. Okay, so the first component of the equation obviously is how long does it take for House Bill 1240 to suddenly become codified into the RCW? That is essentially, hey, how long before this is actual law? Okay, what we're going to take a look at here is the legislative history of how this has progressed through the first chamber, that being the House, and take a look at where it sits currently today and try to figure out a potential timeline. Okay, when we go back and we track the legislative history of House Bill 1240, we will see that it took exactly 56 days from the date in which it was first read until the day it passed out of the House. And it did pass out of the House on the last possible day that it could have passed out of the House. And one of the game plans that we've seen with this big gun control legislation, and we've seen this the last three legislative sessions in a row, is that these are always argued and discussed at the very end of the legislative session. There is not one significant piece of gun control legislation passed in Washington in the last three years that was passed before 8 p.m. at night. Now, the last day to make it out of committee in the Senate is April 12th. But here's the thing. As of today, Monday, March 13th, 
you're probably watching this on Tuesday, March 14th, House Bill 1240 had not yet been assigned to a Senate committee. Now, it will be. Don't worry, it will be. And it will have to go through two committees. So it's going to have to ricochet around in the Senate for a little while, again, buying us a little bit more time. Now, floor voting on the Senate will take place anywhere from April 13 to April 23. My prediction is if House Bill 1240 makes it out of committee, which I do believe it will, it will be on the floor on the evening of approximately April 22nd. Why do I say that? Well, that's during the weekend, which is a very slow news cycle. Okay, and if you take a look at the game plan and the playbook that they've used for the last three legislative sessions, that's exactly when they like to pass this legislation. Now, we know that the minute Governor Inslee signs it, though, it becomes effective law. It's not like the magazine ban of last year where we actually had time to prepare. So when would it likely be signed? Well, now we need to take a look for the opposite of a slow news cycle. We need to take a look at the perfect time for a news cycle. And that really follows right there on its footsteps. And that would be that Monday, January 24th or Tuesday, January 25th, because that is all the time that Governor Inslee needs to assemble the media, to bring some of the moms to man action and to play all the trumpets and have all the fanfare that he will want to have is this amazing accomplishment in stripping you of your God given and constitutionally guaranteed rights. Now, that gives us a little more than 30 days from now, roughly about 40 to 42 days before this could be possibly pass out of the Senate. Now, let's remember, though, there is one thing that could happen and likely is going to happen while this bill is ricocheting around in the Senate. And that is we do believe that we will be getting a ruling out of the United States District Court, San Diego Division, Southern California from the Honorable Roger T. Benitez in both the case of Duncan v. Bonta as well as Miller v. Bonta. One covers a magazine ban, the other one co covers California's assault weapon ban. We do anticipate that both rulings will be in the plaintiff's favor and that those particular statutes will be struck down as unconstitutional. There likely will be a motion for an injunction, which Judge Benitez is likely going to entertain, which will then, of course, force the state of California to appeal. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Could that force the skids on the Washington State Senate if all of a sudden there is this earth-shattering case out of the Ninth Circuit of which Washington sits in? It is possible, not highly probable, and I think it is quite probable while a ruling will come out during that time, do I think it's going to derail people who have already shown a complete disregard for constitutional rights? No, I do not, unfortunately. Now, one of the other things we need to be aware of is that if Governor Inslee signs this on the 24th or the 25th, since it becomes effective law, the injunctions, the lawsuits to overturn this law will be filed the same day. I anticipate that you are likely going to see lawsuits filed in at least three separate jurisdictions. Number one, probably in Thurston County Superior Court on the state level. However, there is likely going to be additional suits filed somewhere in eastern Washington on the state level as well. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, silent majority foundation. In addition, we will likely have a suit filed in the Western District of Washington as well as the Eastern District of Washington. Every one of those suits, because the law is effective immediately, will ask for an injunction on enforcement of the law. Now, depending on when that happens, of course, let us remember what's happening on the federal court side of things, because at some point, Judge Benitez is, in fact, going to issue a ruling. And I think everybody knows that the smart money is that Judge Benitez will rule in the plaintiff's favor on both the Miller and Duncan case. Now, that will then effectively throw out California's magazine ban as well as their assault weapon ban. And the plaintiffs will ask for an injunction so that those laws can no longer be enforced in California, leading to a, hopefully a new Freedom Week. Okay, now, if Judge Benitez grants an injunction, and even if he doesn't, okay, if he rules in the plaintiff's favor, the state of California, without a doubt, bet your bottom dollar on it, is going to appeal this to the Ninth Circuit again. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay, and this is where the rubber is going to meet the road because the Ninth Circuit for many, many years had the perfect out, which was this little two part balancing test. Well, you know, yes, it's an infringement on an individual right, but the greater need to society outweighs it. Okay, that test doesn't exist anymore. That test is null and void. It is a one part test, which is 
Does the text of the Second Amendment cover this? Yes. Is there a historical analog that justifies this type of restriction? Answer, no. Therefore, this law is unconstitutional. And if the Ninth Circuit just sticks to the clearly defined case law, there is but only one conclusion that any justice can come to. Let us remember that now we are going back to the simple common use test, not announced in Bruin, but actually announced in the Heller opinion by Justice Scalia. And the common use test is the one that is very straightforward. The only historical analog that we have that permits restricting firearms are firearms which are both deemed dangerous and unusual. Not dangerous or unusual, dangerous and unusual. And when we are talking about the most commonly used rifle for many lawful purposes, anywhere in the United States, probably anywhere on the planet, then there is absolutely nothing unusual about that firearm and therefore it cannot be regulated in this fashion. But here's the bottom line. We don't really know how long the timeline takes, and you know the state of California is going to drag things on, and we also don't know whether or not we will get an injunction granted by either a state or a federal court. So there is a high probability, a high probability that this becomes effective law and is effective law for a period of time before it is either overturned or enjoined. And for that reason, because I cannot guarantee that none of this happens, and I certainly cannot guarantee the length of time that we may be subjected to this otherwise unconstitutional law. It is for that reason that we have recommended here at Washington Gun Law for several weeks now that if you were ever thinking about stocking up either parts, components, or firearms in these platforms, now is the time to do so. Listen, I know you're also going to say, but hey, what can I do about it? Listen, you should know what to do about it by now, but we're going to put it all down in the description box below. If you don't know how to get a hold of your legislator, don't worry, got a link down there for how you can find them and how you can contact them. More importantly and more useful, why don't you just sign up for the Conservative Ladies of Washington's Legislative Action Center. It's the best in the business. Not only do you get up to the minute updates about what's happening in Olympia, but you actually get action items on what you can personally do to help stop some of the insanity. Listen, you may have more questions about this or anything else related to what's left of your Second Amendment rights. You guys should know how to contact us by now, but if you don't, all that information's in the description box below. In the meantime, I want you all to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay safe.